Hey there, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Gideon's Tactical. What we got before us here today is the Kershaw Asset, a large, just thumping on blade. So let's go ahead and jump on into it here, give you some quick specs for you. You're looking at a total weight of 3.8 ounces, which isn't bad. Under four ounces, I like that. You got a blade length of three and a quarter. You got a closed length of four and five eighths. So just over four and a half inches long. Very thick. You're looking over a half an inch thick. And you're looking at a total weight, of, I'm sorry, a total length of seven and seven eighths. So just about eight inches overall length. Blade is made out of Chinese 8CR13 MOV satin finish. Now this is the first thing, I just kind of want to talk about this for just a second before we actually talk about the knife. Uh, you know, I love Kershaw. Kershaw is the number one when it comes to pocket knives. I look at what they have on the market before I go to any other company just because I love the price point and the options and the quality that Kershaw produces. So I love Kershaw. The thing is that with that come some really boring combinations for their blades. Now, what I mean by that is, hey, here's an asset. You know, you're rocking the asset today. And you see your buddy, you're like, oh, man, you're rocking the knockout? Oh, what do you got? What colors do you got? Oh, stonewash finish, black handle. Oh, okay, I get that. Hey, hey, you're, you're rocking the chill? What, what is that looking like? Oh, satin finish, black handle. Okay. Oh, you're, you're rocking the burst, buddy. Hey, hey, show me that burst. Let me see. Do you got any options with that? Oh, stonewash finish, black handle. You see... There's four different blades of different sizes, different qualities, and they're all the exact same color. That gets really boring after a while, so I'm just saying to you, Kershaw, I, I understand for price point, but it'd be really nice for you to give us some different colored blades, you know, give us some Teflon coated blades, blacked out, as well as just some different handle colors even, you know, inlays or something. And I'll pri I'll pay an extra five, ten bucks, you know, if it gives me the option to possibly get a different color. So just wanted to kind of throw that out there to you. Take these guys off screen. Get into the asset. This has an awesome, sweet looking, very unique blade. Now I will say the blade shapes are very, very different, even though the colors are exactly the same. So this is kind of a Persian, you know, scimitar type of looking thing. And this is going to give you awesome slicing ability. I happen to have the serrated version here in front of us because this is actually going as a gift to one of my buddies. So nice serrations. These are, in my opinion, easier to sharpen than the normal Kershaw serrations, though they drag a little bit more than the other Kershaw rounded serrations but those rounded ones are almost impossible to resharpen so but awesome belly on this blade with a really you know in unique sweep hollow grind very sharp out of the box as well as the serrations are very sharp great tip precise so you can do your edc use but strong enough that i'm not worried about breaking it if i'm stabbing some stuff nice thick blade just awesome sweep just very unique when you whip that out that's a unique blade large and you're just going to do a lot of EDC tasks, a lot of slicing, really nice and easy through packaging, food prep, you know, that type of thing. It's going to do really, really well. And the size, over three inches, this is where I'm going to go again to the term that I'm starting to use for some knives is civilian tactical. Is this a soldier knife? Absolutely not. We've talked about that. There are other knives that are better for that and usually have better lockup on both top and bottom with a thumb ramp and finger choil. This does have a finger choil though, and the lockup is good enough that if I needed to pierce or slash and defend my life, it, it could do the job. Not ideal, but it could do the job if it had to with this finger choil here and the lockup and ergonomics in my hand. I can definitely stab and penetrate without worrying about riding up on the blade and hurting myself or losing the grip. So I would say EDC is the number one design, but you could use this in a civilian tactical format if you had to. So 8CR13 MOV, great budget steel, nothing to complain about there. Good Rockwell hardness, 57 to 58, same as OS 8, right up there with that. Uh, it does say China down there, a lot of people don't like that though. So that's the blade itself. Deployment is only a finger flipper. It's nice and big and pronounced though. So easy to grab with their speed, safe, open assist, which opens with authority every time, no problems able to close it one-handed and uh, just great deployment nothing nothing wrong in my opinion the 
The flipper itself, you can see right here, is a little kind of sharp. It does wear if you're just playing with this. It does kind of hurt your finger a little bit. So just FYI on that. You may even want to take that, uh, take a belt sander to that and just sand that down just ever so slightly because it is a slightly uncomfortable if you're flipping this over and over again. But no thumb studs, just the finger flipper. Finger flipper acts as a choil. We'll look at the ergonomics for us. Great ergonomics. We're large size gloves. Fits well in my hand. Plenty of room left over. Very wide and thick. It's over a half an inch thick, so you are going to feel it in your pocket. But it does feel really nice. That finger choil locks me up really well. I prefer almost for most knives, you know, this kind of flat, not necessarily thumb ramp, just kind of having a flat surface here that I can do my slicing and cutting. Uh, I don't mind that at all. So the ergonomics itself are really good, feel good in my hand, rounded machined edges, which I like. And that's really nice. The lockup itself is a very thick liner lock, purchases 50% of the back of the blade right there. No wiggle left, right, up, down. The lockup is great, moves out away to the side. Centering is almost perfect, near perfection there with the centering. The handle is glass reinforced nylon. GLN, I believe, is how you say that. So so texturing reminds me a lot of the Kershaw Clash. And the texturing, unique design too. I mean, it's kind of ugly. I'll, I'll say that. I mean, it's unique, but it's kind of just an ugly looking blade. You wouldn't want to take this home to mom and tell her you're dating it. This is the one you hide. But, uh, you know, just ergonomically, it feels fine in your hand. It's just different, but it is, again, thick. Finally, Zytel spacer in the back. Tip up, tip down, though. Pocket clip. Love that. And they brought it all the way up. See? It's not that hard to do it, folks. You can bring this almost all the way up. So it rides with only about that much showing, which isn't bad at all. Let's see if I can show you here. Boom. You're going to have that much sticking out, which isn't terrible. Lanyard hole. And it is tip up, tip down. Blacked out clip. I like that, too. Most Kershaws have a non-blacked out clip and just very strong but the texturing on the handle isn't too bad to where it's going to tear up your pocket. So that's a really nice that little feature there as well. So that's the Kershaw Assist. You're looking around the $25 mark. Not bad for the price. A little bit smaller than the compound. The asset and the compound are right there in the same kind of area. And uh, just kind of a little bit larger and larger than, say, the Blast. The Blast is definitely a little bit smaller than the asset. And the asset is just different and unique. But not a bad open assist knife, particularly a blade if you just want to thump on it, kick the crap out of it, buy a couple, throw them in a couple different drawers, buy a serrated, buy a plane. You know, you're not going to regret purchasing this particular blade. So hopefully this has helped you out. Thanks for watching. Stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.